Hey guys, welcome to another one of my How Long To Beat video game reviews. In 2006, Final Fantasy XIII was released. And along that title, a new one was announced. Final Fantasy vs XIII. This game would be in an alternate universe to Final Fantasy XIII. And now, 10 years later, that game finally got released. But, in 2012, Square Enix thought that they would go into another direction so they changed the name into another number of the series, Final Fantasy XV. So for 10 years Square Enix has left us waiting for this new title to be released. And back then in 2006, I was pretty psyched for Versus 13, because unlike the majority of the internet, I actually liked Final Fantasy 13. Don't burn me at the stake please! But I did find Final Fantasy 13 amazing. and. I just knew that Final Fantasy vs 13 would not dissatisfy. So now after all this waiting, Final Fantasy 15 got released and I can't wait to play it. So let's go on and deep dive into it. The story takes place in a world named Eos and you take the role as Noctis, the crown prince and heir to the kingdom of Lucis. The city's capital is named Insomnia, home of the last known crystal in the world and is ruled by King Regis Lucis Calum, Noctis' father. Through the power of the crystal, Regis keeps the kingdom safe by conjuring a wall, sacrificing his life essence along the way. That's why he looks older than he actually is. Badass grandpa at age of 50. Opposing the Lucis monarchy is the Nilfheim Empire. They seek to rule all lands and acquire the last remaining crystal. Nilfheim's emperor, Idolus, contacts Regis through his counselor, Arden, to make peace and sign a peace treaty. Regis senses a disturbance in the force and makes plans of his own. The king makes plans to wed Noctis and Luna. She is the princess of Tenebrae. The king sends his son on his way to Tenebrae along with his trustworthy Kingsguard, Gladio, Ignis and Pronto. All still with me? There are quite a number of names and places. The moment Noctis and his companions depart brings the beginning of the events of the movie Kingsglaive. Close your eyes, put your fingers in your ears, and count to 20 at my mark if you don't want to know anything. Okay, ready? 3, 2, 1, now! <gasps> so the Empire and the King starts the peace treaty, but Aedalus betrays Regis and has Luna as a hostage. Nilfheim starts an onslaught, killing nearly everybody in the process and summoning a gigantic creature to annihilate the capital. In this process, the King gets murdered by his own captain who defected the Empire and in the Regis' last moments entrusts Luna with the Ring of Lucii. The ring contains the power to control the crystal power and the power of all previous kings in line. <sighs> Phew, okay, was that 20 seconds? All right, let's continue. Not long after you and your Kingsguard set onward on your journey, Ignis hears news from the capital all over the media. The king has fallen, Nilfheim destroyed the kingdom of Lucis, Noctis has lost his father, and has now claimed the throne along with her responsibilities. Noctis must now visit the ancestors' tombs to claim the power of the previous kings to prove his worthiness. It's your standard plot for the protagonist to claim power from the ancients, like Tales of Symphonia, where you visit the temples, or even the avatar where you get the powers from your previous lines. Together with claiming the power of the royal arms, you also need to prove yourself to the gods, claiming their trust to help you in your adventure. This will not be a gentle journey. Final Fantasy XV has a huge open world setting, filled with creatures from small to big to really big. These monsters can be fought at will, whenever, wherever. Though some are very... very strong and need some training beforehand. You can visit restaurants and join hunts to take them down for payment. This will be one of the ways to claim Gil. Gil is your currency in the world. Selling your stuff that you don't have use for anymore is also a great way to earn money. Selling other stuff like your body is sadly not legal. Oh, uh, oh, oh uh, what, what were you 
you're talking about? <clears throat> oh yes, hunts at the restaurants. These said restaurants also give the opportunity to receive information on nearby parking spots, treasures, camping spots, basically every interest point in the neighborhood. Getting from place to place can be done in various ways. On foot, obviously, walk or run. The funny thing is, I was a bit ticked off because there is a use of stamina, but I saw no stamina bar whatsoever. And I became angry at this point, but then I got pointed out that it's turned off and on in the options and it's off by default. <laughs> you can also travel by car. The Regalia offers you a fast way to travel on the roads of Eos, making it possible to drive yourself or have Ignis drive for you whenever you wish. So you can lay down your controller for a while. It's nice to drive around and see the wonderful, wonderful world around you through your car window when it rains or with the top down in the sunlight. This world is absolutely beautiful. The colors, the bloom effects, the wildlife that makes you stop in the middle of the road to let them pass. Man, this world feels alive. And then you can just simply open your map, select a waypoint and see how many meters. Feet? What the hell is this? I didn't sign up for no feet and miles measuring system. And why can't I change it somewhere? God! <clears throat> Another way to travel is by the all-famous Chocobo. These can bring you across fields a lot faster than a foot, to where the Regalia would be unable to take you. You can run, sprint and even race with your Chocobos. Taking long trips with your Chocobos levels them up. This way you can acquire longer sprint times and higher speed. Along with all these wonderful ways of travel, moving from one town to other can be time consuming. So to avoid this time loss, you can have the ability to fast travel. This whole world is glamorous. I never found anything wrong or missing from it. The design was impeccable. Well, except for the camera at times. Or an NPC glitching out. Or the camera again. God damn it, I can't see anything. But the world is great. No, seriously, the camera was really annoying at times. Some battles had to be fought in tight corners and I couldn't see jack shit. And Final Fantasy XV also works with a lot of fan service. I mean, I admit, your party consists of four great looking guys. And then the girls, well... You see what I mean. But I digress. Pressing the touchpad will open your menu. And here, you can show your map of the world. Follow up on active quests. Change your gear to make your party stronger. And then Elementcy is Noctis' expertise. His royal powers allow him to absorb elemental powers and combining them to create spells. These spells can then be used by him or his party members. The ascension grid reminded me of Final Fantasy X. You can spend ability points to unlock abilities in the ascension grid to power up your characters. You can strengthen the whole team or manage member by member. And to receive ability points or AP, you can do various things. In the Ascension Grid, you can select to gain AP after long chocobo rides or long car trips. Battle sequences also grant AP, like warp kills or link strikes. I'll explain these phenomena in the gameplay section, don't worry. And of course, leveling up is your main source of AP, but you can't level up forever, so you have to rely on these other ways to reach your cap. I personally found the leveling up part quite intriguing. Just as any other RPG, you gain experience from completing quests and tackling enemies, but you don't level as you progress. Only when you and your king guard go and rest at a camp or a motel or expensive hotel, your experience points are tallied and you gain levels as you rest. And then notably, there are 4 skill points per character that require specific ways to level these up, but more on this in the gameplay section. And last but certainly not least, the soundtrack, oh boy this got me way too excited. When you drive to Regalia and turn on some tunes, you get to hear all the soundtracks of the previous games. All of them! You can drive on the battle theme of Final Fantasy VII. Hell, you can even pick up an MP3 player and listen to them on foot. I also love how they implemented some small things into this game. This sounds like you're having fun. Opposed to its predecessors, Final Fantasy XV offers real-time action combat. Yes, you heard me correctly, real-time. It is loosely based on how Kingdom Hearts operates, but far more advanced. 
You can simply mash the attack button to chain attack your enemies and change weapons with your arrow keys. <laughs> that rhymes. I'm such a poet. Guarding grants you the ability to parry or blink warp out of the way. Noctis has the ability to warp. He can throw his weapon and instantly warp to its destination. He can warp attack and even warp kill in stealth missions. Yes, you have stealth missions. This costs MP though, so it is limited in use. But finding a warp point where you can be safe refills the MP gauge completely, allowing Noctis to re-engage in battle and continue to slaughter his enemies. Noctis has a variety of weapons in his arsenal. He can use every weapon that can be found in the game. Swords, great swords, lances, daggers, pistols, machinery, magic, and his royal arms. While his Kingsguard have their main weapon and one secondary weapon, or magic, to switch to in battle. Gladio focus on heavy weaponry with shields as a side weapon. Ignis is experienced in using daggers and lances, while Prompto is the ranger, using pistols and machinery. Oh, machinery by the way are weapons like crossbow and bioblasters. While fighting enemies, you can dodge their attacks and strike them from behind, resulting in a blindside damage multiplier. Attacking in the blindside also allows one of your party members to join the attack at times causing a blindside link to occur. This can also happen when Noctis parries an attack, resulting in a link attack. This is the power of team play. Hell yeah! Each of your party members also have techniques. While fighting, your tech bar will be filled with each stroke delivered. Each character's technique requires a certain amount of bars from the tech bar and can be activated by holding the tech button and selecting the party member. Each of the party members, including you, has a specific expertise in your journey. Prompto has a camera and focuses on photography. Ignis is the chef of the bunch. Whenever the crew camps out in the wild, Ignis will cook a wonderful meal for you guys. And Gladio is the survivalist. He takes care of setting up the camp and finding useful items around the world. And you? Well, you're an angler. You can fish at fishing spots to gather a new meal or rare items. These skills also need leveling. Prompto needs to take pictures in the wild or in battle and Ignis needs to cook, obviously, to gain levels. You need to catch fish, and Gladio, well, he needs to walk. Yes, he simply just needs to walk to upgrade his survival skills. Marvelous. And what is a Final Fantasy game without fantastic summons? Yes, this game also has summons. Though not in your ordinary fashion. There is no option to select a summon and summon in battle, no. These summons are the gods, which powers you are seeking throughout the story. They have minds on their own. And if they see that you are in need of help, they will offer it to you and prompt to press the summon button when they see fit. Though these circumstances seem random, they can be triggered in certain events. Like being in a danger state for far too long, or when your teammates are down for too long. If you are in an open world area or in close quarter encounter. These are all perimeters that the game will render before providing the opportunity to summon. Throughout completing the game, I have never felt myself getting bored. There is always something you can do. Being at leveling up your professions, doing side quests, grinding your own levels and of course progressing the story. The story itself wasn't a letdown either. I felt connected to my characters, felt real emotion for them. And this is one of the foundations in an RPG game. If an RPG fails in this aspect, the game has failed in my opinion. But in this case, it was spot on. The game has amazing story battle sequences. Against those gods I mentioned earlier, these battles kept me pumped all the way. I will not spoil the story for you guys, but beating the story reveals a true, sad ending. A good ending, in my opinion. But. My first completion was at level 77, and almost 50 hours on the clock. I did almost all the side quests by this point and needed one completion to unlock the rest. My second completion was of course at level 99 and 69 hours of playtime. Giggity giggity, giggity goo. To review this game, I completed the game to its fullest so you can get a decent view. For the story alone, I had spent around 13 hours. This might not sound like a lot for a Final Fantasy game, but this is the main quest alone. Because you will drift off and do side quests whenever you feel like, so the game takes longer to finish. 
You get more side quests after your first playthrough, so you need to continue afterward to complete it to its fullest. Getting 100% completion and the Platinum Trophy, or 100% achievements, are somewhat related, so it will take about that time that I had played to receive them. When the game is completed, you get a quest to upgrade to Regalia. It will be upgraded to a Type F. Can you guess what the F stands for? Awesome. This is totally worth the trip. You can go anywhere now. Okay, I admit, this would have been handy when playing the game before you finish it, but what the hell, I can use it to complete it now. Grinding to level 99 can be a little painful, but I had done it through doing all the hunts and resting at the most expensive lodge for the best XP multiplier, so it wasn't much of a hassle. As I said earlier, a lot more will be available after your first playthrough, like optional dungeons. These hold the best weapons in the game, so doing these obviously has a great reward in it for you. My last trophy, or achievement, was downing the biggest enemy in the game. Spoiler alert for people who live under a rock, <laughs> the Adamantoys. It took me some time to get this fucker to the grave. One hour of fighting. The Platinum after delivering the final blow and delivering the quest. Man, it felt really good. But I must say, maxing your party members' expertise skills didn't fulfill my time slash reward needs. Sure, you get some nice things at leveling them up, but it took more time than I wish to have spent on them. So that wasn't really worth it. The rest of the trophies or achievements are pretty straightforward and really not hard to obtain. So go for it. I had real fun playing the game. I even took some time off of work so I could just sit at home and continue playing. The story is just amazing. I really, really enjoyed it from end to end. This entry in Final Fantasy is really a recommendation to any RPG fanatic out there, and even for beginners. Because the startup screen, it says a Final Fantasy game for fans and first timers. And I think this is true. Anybody would be able to love it. And I can juggle the rating for this game around because there is just so much to do. And some things might not be enjoyable as other things. Because you can solely focus on the story or you can explore all of EOS along with it. Mashing it up into one complete awesome journey. Getting all the trophies is a breeze, but completing the game 100% is just real challenging. Fun, but challenging. I admit leveling to level 99 or leveling up my expertises to level 10 felt like a grind. But that's not uncommon in RPGs. And with that in mind guys, I rate this game a gold. I really do hope you liked my Final Fantasy XV review. And if you did, consider dropping a like and maybe subscribe if you want to see more reviews in the future. I don't know which game that I will do for my next review, but I am considering doing some let's plays for RPGs that I have in the closet here behind me. So if you would like to see that, consider dropping by. For now I will wrap up this video and I hope to see you in the next one.